One of the topics the Utopia survey class discussed often was the success or failure of the Topolobampo Pacific colony. When discussing this, one of the items we examined were the documents of personal accounts or newspaper interviews from colonists. Some of these accounts were by people still living in the colony or had just recently left. What was found brought forth were multiple perspectives and experiences that continued our discussion on what makes a utopia successful or not. Beginning with Albert K. Owen's idea of what he envisioned his calling to be, Owen reflects an integral cooperation at work number two on his first experience at Topolobampo Bay. Quote, I recall the occasion as though it were yesterday. It was an evening of September, 1872. Myself and companion Fred G. Fitch came on horseback at the close of the beautiful twilight upon some Indian fishers encamped among the bushes on the west shore. Thought I, if the morning should discover a deep and safe channel from this island inland sea of the Gulf of California, then here decided I, at the midnight hour, is the site of a great metropolitan city. On that water, now without a sail, will one day come the ships of every nation. On this plain will dwell happy families. There was much enthusiasm for Owen's colony, and the conditions of some were better prospects than what they were currently living in. As one observation notes from Chris Jennings, quote, citizens of the small utopias tended to have much more fun than the people living beyond their fences. Most of these communities kept up a dizzying schedule of contra dances, lectures, card games, seances, philosophical debates, among many others. All of this took place at a time when rural Americans often went months without seeing a non-relation, end quote. Life in the colony, therefore, may not have been perfect, but it was for many colonists an improvement over how they would live in the United States. As seen in the article here, Bound from Mexico, it describes the response to one colonist recruiting others to join him on his trip. Quote, I shall start with 100 people, he said. I saw in the paper yesterday that the concession we wanted from the Mexican government has been granted, and I'm waiting for a letter, which I expect daily from Mr. Owen, ordering me on to the colony. I shall take out 100 people with me, all of whom are practical, hardworking men and women and of good moral character, end quote. Throughout the year of 1887, the colonists went through struggles that resulted in a number of deaths and experienced what became termed the terrible tales of the colony. There was no fresh water within what was designated as Pacific City, and colonists had to row seven miles across the bay to Los Compos to get some. A smallpox epidemic coupled with a typhoid outbreak caused several deaths. Owen abandoned the plan, his vision for cooperative living, during the first six months of the colony, declaring that everyone would work for a full day on the railroad or construction of the colony for the flat rate of $3 a day. However, it is sad to note that they never did get up to a point of self-sufficiency where they could live on that plan. Many newspapers, like the one shown here, wrote about the suffering of the colonists, calling Owen a scheming man. turned against Owen during the terrible tales, and as this open letter shows from a former director, Alvin D. Brock, of the Credit Foncier Company exposing Owen for not taking care of the colonists. Brock writes, quote, may God forgive me for my silence so long. I can only plead an excuse that I was mentally and physically prostrated by disease. I beg you to believe, Mr. Owen, that I will, in the near future, pay for my further respects to you as the promoter of the most gigantic and baseless swindle which has ever my misfortune to read or know of, end quote. As utopic or dystopic as the Topolobampo story is, depending on one's perspective, we must also keep in mind that it was a, quote, dream part egalitarian utopia and part economic exploitation of Mexico's resources, end quote, often proposed in the settler colonial language of imperialistic venture. Realistically, it is not so simple to say whether or not Owen's utopian dream was a success or not. As the utopian survey class discussed this, I hope others will also discuss critically from their own perspectives what they consider the outcome of Pacific Colony.